Are you an Angular developer wondering if it's okay to use a sync await in your Angular projects? I'm going to cover that in detail. I'm going to show you some new information that we have from the Angular team confirming if a sync await is supported or not. We're going to talk about how the support is implemented and we're also going to cover how the support for a sync await will evolve in the future when we have zoneless Angular applications. Welcome back to the Angular University channel, I'm Vasco. Let's jump straight into the content. So can you use a sync await in an Angular project? Yes, you can, it works perfectly and there is nothing against it. There is nothing wrong about using a sync await in an Angular program. It's perfectly supported by the Angular framework and I'm going to show you official confirmation of that in this video. Now, if you have been using, like I have, a sync await in your Angular projects for a while, you know that it works and that there is nothing wrong with it. So why is this video even necessary? Well, I think that it's necessary because there is still a lot of misconceptions and confusions in the Angular community concerning a sync await. When I made a video on my channel a couple of weeks ago, this one here, Angular Mistake 4, Stop Avoiding Using Promises, I got a lot of replies here on YouTube and on Twitter saying things like, for example, uh, a sync await in Angular, it almost feels illegal to see this, does this really work? And I saw comments like, this is broken because zones does not support it, it should not be used, etc. I've seen blog posts, tweets about it saying that there is something wrong with a sync await in Angular. I just wanted to clarify that that is indeed not the case, that a sync await is perfectly supported by the framework. And if you want to use it to build your Angular applications, you can. It's just a tool just like any other, it's there. All right, so now let's get to the official confirmation by the Angular team. So let me switch here to Twitter, where here in a thread, I asked here to Matthew Riegler from the Angular team the following. Hi Matthew, quick question. While we wait for zoneless, could you please confirm if there is any potential downside of using a sync await in Angular? And this is the reply from Matthew. Zone.js is not able to patch native async await. If you want them to contribute to change detection stability, you need to transform them into generators. This can either be done setting the compilation target of your TypeScript build to before 2016 or by using a Babel plugin, which the Angular CLI does. So then I have asked here uh, confirmation. Hi Matthew, so async await is well supported by the framework, correct? The community would love to get direct confirmation for this. And I explain here some of the misconceptions that you might find online about this. So a sync await, and this is the key part. So here it is, confirmation. A sync await in Angular apps works perfectly if you use the CLI, because it uses the Bubble plugin internally. If, on the other hand, you use a custom build, non-CLI, then you will have change detection issues unless the configuration of the custom build also uses that same plugin. And here is the link to the plugin. So a big thank you to Matthew for providing this clarification. Now let's go ahead and let's unpack all of this. But I ask you that while we unpack what is said here, that you keep the main point in mind at all times, which is that a sync await in Angular apps works perfectly. Now, because I know that you are curious about it, let's go ahead and let's talk about how does Angular exactly support a sync await? Because as mentioned here, zone.js is not able to patch native a sync await. So if you are familiar with zones, it's a library that Angular uses to get informed whenever asynchronous events occur in the browser. So whenever an HTTP request occurs in the browser, whenever a set timeout occurs, Angular gets notified that those events occurred and then change detection can trigger the update of the user interface. I'm talking about default change detection. So zone.js patches 
the native APIs of the browser in order to be able to inform Angular that these events have occurred. Now, what is the problem with a sync await. The problem with a sync await and zones is that a sync await is a language feature. It's not a library. So it's not like Angular or zones can patch it to get notified that a wait occurred. That's not possible because it's a language feature. So how does the Angular CLI resolve this? What the Angular CLI does is it's going to take the async await syntax and instead of trying to run it natively in the browser without any modifications, the Angular CLI is going to compile this down to something that is compatible with Zone.js so that you can use a sync await without any problem in your Angular applications. So how does the Angular CLI build handle a sync await then? If we check here this pull request, we can see the solution. And the solution is native async await is being down level to generators. So we are taking the async await syntax and we are transforming it into another feature that is compatible with zones. What are generators? These are ECMAScript generators. It's this syntax here for handling asynchronous code that looks like this, function star and yield. It's similar to other languages. This is kind of an alternative to async await that maybe you never even heard about before that is available natively in the JavaScript language and that allows you to write asynchronous code. This syntax was never as widely adopted as async await which on the other hand, I'm sure that you are familiar with. So this is how the Angular CLI is handling things under the hood. It's turning a sync await into something else that is going to be compatible with zones so that a sync await is perfectly supported by Angular default change detection. And also, of course, it works perfectly with on push as well. So how will the support for a sync await evolve in Angular? Well, in a near future, we're going to have zoneless Angular applications. So we're going to be able to opt out of zones. We will be able to detect all the changes in data via signals. So in that particular scenario, we will no longer need zones anymore. This means that we are going to be able to support a sync await natively in the browser, which means that we will no longer need this Babel plugin that down levels a sync await to generators. So this is another reason for looking forward to a future of Angular without zones, because that will mean that we will have native support for a sync await. So then let's summarize. A sync await works perfectly in Angular. It's officially supported. You can start using it today. Right now, the Angular CLI takes the async await syntax and converts it into something else so that it's compatible with zones. In the future, when we have zoneless Angular applications, this will no longer be necessary. But I want to reiterate that please don't worry about that. That's an internal detail that the Angular CLI is taking care of for you. For us as developers, we can rest assured that there is absolutely no problem in using a sync await in our Angular applications because it's officially supported. Thank you everyone for watching. Let me know in the comment section what you think about a sync await, if you are planning to use it or not. Cheers and I will see you next time.